elevator. And then we knew which elevators not to get in because they had fixed those ones so many times. So we would push the button and we would let the elevator go so we could get a different elevator. We weren't the only one. That other lady no, said, no, I'm not getting into that right. one. So yeah, this is really the, the pyramid experience here, right? <laughs> there it is. We've officially started recording, Jess. You got to count down. I can't do it with the microphone in my hand. Oh, that's right. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to do that because we're in the same room, but I wasn't going to tell you that until we were done there. Oh my gosh. Welcome to this episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We are good for your ears. I'm Dan, and you can find me everywhere at RFS Dan. And I have to remember how to do all of this. You got this. Three, two, one, action. Action. And I'm Jess, and you can find me everywhere at Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs. Ah, uh, yes. Back. It feels so good to be back. My popular demand again. <laughs> we tried this. We tried to reboot it last year for a little bit. Didn't quite work out, but we're back at it again with the renewed desire why didn't it work out last year we don't have any time remember. is that we don't have any time so how is it going to work out this year we're committing we're going to not time we're, we're not, not going to overthink it we're not going to overthink it we're just going to hang out with these guys because that's all you want to yes. do is just hang, hang out a lot's happened in the two years since we stopped <laughs> podcasting like every day <laughs> Which we did. We podcasted. We have over 118 podcasts up on Spotify still. Yeah, we were <gasps> Thank doing you, Spotify. it once a week. Once a week once for a week. two years? Yeah. We did it for two years. Might not be once a week this time around, guys, but maybe once every other week. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep we'll it going. See. Yeah, we'll as, see. Long as, as long as we don't have to come with like <laughs> super crazy topics and stuff like that, uh, right. we can just pick up the microphone and hang out and talk. Yeah, Every I time we so. talk, we talk for 45 minutes on the phone anyway we have not addressed the elephant in the room there is an elephant see the elephant elephant in the room (laughs) there is an elephant (laughs) in the room dan will edit one in here (laughs) thanks Uh, for committing me to that (laughs) um we're together in a room that's not my house or your house or anybody else's house so we shouldn't get too far before we explain where we are (laughs) all right so let me explain to you the rules of this podcast i feel i don't like how i'm in frame sorry oh professional right here because i wanted to what what, what's this like i'm like i'm at a tech conference what's 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 like you're at a tech conference oh wait you are sit up dan so we're here in beautiful las vegas nevada so if you're listening yes and you're not watching us on YouTube. Correct. You should watch us on YouTube yes. so you can see the visuals. YouTube.com slash CC Mouse Podcast. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yes. We are in the Dorito. <laughs> the Just Dorito. a few weeks before Super Bowl. The Dorito Luxor in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, we for are. For the CES conference. Yes, we are. And we're upstairs, 22 stories high in a suite. Thanks to Dan. Thanks to Dan. Almost stepping on glass. I did. <gasps> You don't know. They don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Unless you follow me on Instagram at RFS Dan, uh, I posted a story. So we were here for Super Zoo in o- August. On August. And Super Zoo is a convention, pet convention. Super Zoo is the one of the largest retail pet conventions. Yes. So it's like a seller's convention. It's like a seller's convention. So we were there for business. And I was just making fun TikToks because the Luxor is, you know, when you're in Vegas, you either have two experiences. You go to a very, very nice hotel with like your family. And Mandalay you've saved, Bay. Like, yeah, and you've saved money. You've flown here. You want the full experience. Or I just need to sleep, right. shower, and I'm out of here. We don't hang out in the room. That's so the Luxor. Exactly. Exactly. So, so we had rooms at the Luxor, and there was like no refrigerators. It was $25 for a refrigerator, if you guys remember that story. Um, I have a whole We have a whole video of our trip on, uh, yeah, we do. on our YouTube. So We'll link them both below. Then I made a stupid clip because I got, I got out of the shower, and I was walking. And I looked down and I saw, I guess a hunk, chunk of glass, right? Right right outside the bathroom door. So I just made a like a like a, a short, just like, oh, look, it's glass. And I tagged the Luxor and they reached out. And you sent the video to me and I I'm sent, like, yeah. oh my gosh, we should say something. They reached out though. They found me and they're like, hey, let us know when you're coming back. We'll hook it up. And guess, guess what? They We're gave back. Us, they gave us a room. They gave us a room. Two rooms. Two suites. With two suites. no heat. Yes. <laughs> Yes, with no heat. <laughs> and you'll see the visual of me running through the room real quick. Uh, I'll give, uh, give you a tour of the, of the room there. Yes, no heat. You would think if we're closer to the sun, since we're the highest you could be, <laughs> that we would have heat. But the heat hasn't worked in my room. The heat worked in... So we're in the suite, so there's like this area where we're sitting, and then there's actually a bedroom as well. The heat works in my bedroom, and that's it. And But it doesn't work in like this area. No. Well, no, they fixed it. On the last day. Uh, today, yeah. Okay, so we've been here for, it's Friday. We've been yep. here since Tuesday. Yep. So, and you, I'm sure you guys saw my uh, stories of freezing in bed. So this time, sometime this afternoon, I turned it on and it worked again. Uh, I think but the one in my it. bedroom doesn't work. It's like this big, huge area. I have the glass by hair, so you can kind of see the reflection of like the strip and stuff like right, that. Right, right. So, uh, 
I have no heat. I'm freezing. But you're from like Michigan, so it doesn't matter if there's heat or not. I didn't think it was bad, but it was colder. Your room was 61 degrees yesterday, and my room was 65. So my room was actually warmer than yours. It was. So we're I were comparing like how cold is your room? Yeah. I, Same I time. Actually, three, two, one. Yeah. Two. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't actually do that bad. I didn't freeze to death like you. I did. I froze to death. You would think, like knowing that we had not the greatest experience the last time we were here, that uh-huh. this time they would make sure we did. I Yeah, right. But, right. you know, taking over 24 hours for maintenance to come and fix the heater, and then they only fixed one. They didn't fix the one in the living room of the other one, and they didn't fix the one in your bedroom, apparently. No, no that one still doesn't do anything either. But, look, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to take the sides of the mechanics on this one. Sorry, Jess, but they were too busy fixing our elevators. Oh, true, true. Fixing our elevators. People were getting trapped in the elevators? Yes, People were getting trapped in them. Yelling in the elevators because they were trapped in the elevators. And then Bubbles was fixing the elevator. And then we knew which elevators not to get in because they had fixed those ones so many times. So we would push the button and we would let the elevator go so we could get a different elevator. We weren't the only one. That other lady no, said, we I'm not getting into that right. one. So yeah, this is really the, the pyramid experience here, right? <laughs> right? So they did try to make it right though because each room got $150 of credit and of food credit. Food credit. Right? And you would think, whoa, $150 in food credit? Where's your king crap? Uh Uh-uh. This is a burden like the Lord of the Rings. It really is. We spent so much time trying to figure out where we're going to get food from to spend this credit that next thing you know, everything's closed and we're walking to New York, New York to eat a mid-club sandwich. At the American? At like what? At a restaurant called the American? At the American. And (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So uh, tonight. We could have had Wagyu steak. I don't even know what that is, and I'm why? Why did you say that now? We just ordered. <laughs> we would have had to leave here, though. It's another one where we would have had to go to MGM Grand to that restaurant. The problem is, is here there's like four restaurants. There's like four restaurants that we can order from. And bar from you can't do that on television. Would give me more ketchup last night <laughs> right? when he gave me my sandwich. <laughs> and he gave me the ketchup. I'm like, oh, uh. blah. so. We have all this credit. We don't know what to use it. So it's our last night here. It expires with the room. So Jess, we ordered all kinds of food because we, we had like $200 left. So I've <laughs> never had salmon. I ordered salmon. I ordered like a poke bowl. I yeah. think I ordered like $70 worth of stuff. And I ordered like a child and got chicken tenders. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You got the David Dobrik YouTube special right, right. there. Could have had anything and they got chicken tenders. anything. So we're waiting for room service. I don't know if they're going to come up here. I don't know. If they're going to come up here like Rob Schneider from Home Alone 2. <laughs> and then, you know. But I had this grandiose thing. I, like, I was going to, we're going to go get sushi and do this. But everything just takes so much time. And like, it's it's far to the car. It's, yeah. It's, and when you go out, it's so stimulating down there. We, we got to put a quarter into the slot machine. We're easily distracted. Easily distracted. And the problem is we're both easily distracted. Moths to the fire. So it like... There's nobody here to keep us on task. No. So it's hard for us to be like, oh, we're going to do this, and this is what we're going to do. Right. We know where we're going, and then as soon as we leave the, the rooms and we make it to the floor, and then there's lights, and then we're we're just... Although and we then did. people want to talk to us. Yeah. And, and I want to talk to people, That's obviously. true. Although we did make it to our most recent experience today on time because we literally just left and did it. Oh, that's Instead right. Instead of going, oh, we could do this, we could do that. Let's decide. We just went, let's just do it. Let's just do it. That's because we were running out of time. We're the last minute ADD procrastinator yeah, things yeah. where it's go time. Okay, so here we are. Why are we here? We're here for CES, the yes. Computer Electronics Show, where you see all the cool, funky robots and stuff like that. And <laughs> But uh, what, like, why, Jess? Why, why is this in our universe here? So we're actually here because, oh, look, I have a vision. Mm-hmm. We're actually here because one of the companies that I worked with last year, Cyrusher, which you guys that watch our vlogs, it's the orange Komodo bike, the full suspension bike that yes. Jamie rides all the time, the nicest one. <laughs> um, they actually reached out to us and asked if we wanted to come to CES to see their new products. And like they had a gift bag for us and they wanted us to make a couple of videos while we were here. So they asked if we would come. And at first I was like, uh, I don't know that I want to go to Vegas and spend all that money. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no we'll pay for your flight. We'll pay for your stuff. And I went, oh, free trip to Vegas? I'll go. Yes. And so, the theme of CES is stupid money. Yeah. Stupid yeah. Stupid money. Yeah. I wow. Asked, and then I asked Jamie if he wanted to go, and he said no. <laughs> Crystal kicked me out. She's like, I'm so glad. She let it slip out in the live stream. I love you. I'm so glad you're getting out of town. <laughs> so, yeah. Out yeah. of town we went. It's only four hours, uh, three and a half hours yeah. for me from LA to uh, Vegas. Yeah. So, you know, it's like cheaper than any flight or anything like that. So. And you you had a really easy trip here. I had a, a night- mom lives here. I had a nightmare scenario trip here. 
That's and right. I may be having a nightmare scenario trip home. So in the next podcast, you'll have to uh, make sure you subscribe <laughs> if you're not, because in the next podcast, you may hear about my nightmare scenario going yes. home. Why don't you go ahead and tell or my non nightmare scenario <laughs> trip? And I'm going to pour myself a glass of Suntory whiskey <laughs> for relaxing time. Not me, guys. I have tea. Make it Suntory times. Because I'm losing my voice. You are, and I'm kind of losing my voice too. And we'll get to the tea debacle. The tea debacle. Oh my God. There's oh, the Sit days. back. There's plenty to do. <laughs> There's plenty to do today here. So uh, you go ahead and tell the story. I'm okay. going to try to gently sit this down and pour myself a drink. Okay. So let me set the scene for you. So getting to Vegas, even though Cy Rusher was paying for my flight, the problem that I had was if I was going to fly out of Alpina, it was going to cost $1,700. And they did have a limit on what they were going to pay for my flight. They're not going to spend $1,700 on a flight. That's silly. So then I looked at flying out of Traverse City, $1,700. So then I looked at flying out of Detroit, 600 bucks. Cool. <laughs> four hour drive to Detroit, right? It's four hours to Detroit. We hadn't had snow. We hadn't had weather. We hadn't had anything. Jamie said he would drive me to Detroit for the airport. Cool. Let's do it. So being who I am on the way down, I decided to drive because, you know, Jamie had to drive four hours back. It's an eight-hour round trip. It's a long, eight hour round trip. Long trip. Long trip. Um, snowstorm. First snowstorm of the season. What did we get? Six to eight inches, I think. So we left. It wasn't snowing at home. We thought we were in the clear. We made it mm, an hour and a half from home, and I may or may not have uh, lost control of the Jeep on black ice, slid from one side of the road all the way across the lanes to the other side of the road. Thank God there was no oncoming traffic regained control of the jeep somehow mainly because i everything my dad ever taught me about driving in the snow was playing over in my head over and over and over and over again didn't panic <laughs> regained control and jamie looked over at me and he said good job <laughs> and i went i want to go home and uh, i cried pretty freaking hard <laughs> let us know the chat you think about these visuals that you're seeing now uh, right oh so yeah i uh I, you looked at me right now and i can still see it oh in your it eyes. was terrifying it was see it in your eyes. i cried so hard like i pulled over and jamie said good job and my hands went straight up to my face and that was it it was i was bawling I want to go home. I want, and I just kept saying it. I want to Trip's go home. Over. I don't want to go. Nothing is worth this. And like that, you know how when you cry and you have that, you can't breathe. I w that's what it was. Like I couldn't breathe. I wanted to go home. And Jamie's like, nope, I'll get you there. And I'm like, I don't care. No, we were going. I, I, three, I texted you and I was three like. Three hours earlier for me, I got one eye open. I'm like, oh, trip's over. Yep, Back to work we yep. go. I'm, I text, I'm pretty yeah. sure I texted you and said I'm going home. And it's always touch and go with our trips. I mean, one time a bunch of years ago, I was ready to come down to the airport to get you. You didn't get on the plane. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's touch and go. You, you, you can get excited, but you really have no idea. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, we're not going. Yeah. So we started, Jamie said he would drive and I... He kept saying, it's only 20 miles to the expressway. Once we get on the expressway, the roads are going to be clear. We only yeah. got to make it another 20 miles. And I'm like, and to be fair, it was 20 miles to the expressway. It was like 70 miles to go back home. So, and the road was worse going back. So the reality was, which thing was better to do probably was what Jamie said. Um, so he started driving and we made it like not even 10 minutes from when I spun the, and I didn't go in a full circle. I went sideways. Um, at one point in time, the trees were going this way though. Uh, we made it around the next corner and there was a jackknife semi truck in the woods on the side of the road. And I said, I want to go home. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you said, you, you can't park there. <laughs> I did. I think I said that. No, did you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, so we stopped and it, right. the, the poor guy, he was from the Detroit area, never driven in the snow before. He was like, are the roads always like this up here? And we're like, in the wintertime, yeah. So then I thought I was going to miss my flight mm -hmm. because we didn't want to let this man sit on the side of the road his truck was leaking diesel fuel and so it wasn't safe for him to stay inside of it because right. it could explode i mean some, something could happen so we let him sit in the car and it took almost 35 minutes for the police to get to the accident now to be fair we did tell them that nobody was injured so it wasn't like i had to rush right. um so then we kept driving and jamie's like we're gonna get there you're gonna have an hour you're gonna be able to get through detail uh, detroit metro and then my phone went off and said my flight was delayed an hour and I was like, oh, well, I mean, now there's a potential we might actually be coming. And I think that's when I messaged you and said, I might make it. Like, we, I might make it. I still might make yeah. it. We have Jamie. He'll do the Surum run he'll, to the he's, airport. He's, I know. I still don't know. I still don't know. Oh so then I'm like, game. So I call Chris back. Game on. Game yep. on. Yeah. And uh, 
He was right. We got on the expressway. There was a few times on the expressway where the snow was snowing so hard and it was starting to pile up on the road. And I looked at Jamie and I went, you said it was going to be, you said the roads were going to be better when we got on the expressway. That's what you told me. And he's like, it's fine. It's not slippery. It's just snow and it's blah, blah. I'm like, we're, we're never going to make it. We're never going to make it. We're going to be on the expressway with all the crazies and we're never going to make it. We made it. And then Jamie had to turn around and drive home in it. Woo! <laughs> but guess what? He made it. Yeah. He also told me that the roads were fine, and then the next day he told me that the roads actually weren't fine. He just didn't want me to worry the entire Aww. time I was on the airplane. <laughs> Dude, Jamie's hardcore. He made it. That eight-hour round trip, he made it, and, and we're going to do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be worse, though. So when he got home, when he got home from that drive, there was, like, maybe two inches of snow on the ground, but oh. by the time they woke up in the morning, there was, like, almost eight inches of snow. So it snowed all night. So he made it home just in time before it got really bad, but... We have 10 to 15 inches coming um, right now, and I'm supposed to fly home tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. That That's a word you could use for that. That's going to be fun. You got to try to, yeah, but you got to you gotta catch a hockey game tomorrow night. I do. First you, hockey game of my life. You, Jamie, Andy. Yep, and Kristen. And yep, Kristen. his wife's coming. Yep, yep. So, you know, there's a lot riding on. There's a lot riding a lot on. Lot but riding you know what? On. We're in Vegas. So, like, you know. You're supposed to be gambling, and you're supposed to be right. taking those risks. So right. I guess we're taking those risks. I was so confident I was going to make it back, I shifted my flight back. I shift, So I was supposed to leave at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, but I shifted my flight back because I'm like, 7 o'clock, I'm going to be really tired yeah, for the hockey for that. game. Yeah, thanks for not. <laughs> right? Thanks for not. I just didn't want to be really tired for the hockey game. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll shift the flight back. So now I'm supposed to leave tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. The flight's supposed to land at 5. The puck drops at 7.30. It takes 20 minutes to get from the airport to Little Caesars Arena if everything works out. Dang. Stay tuned to find Stay out tuned more. To find out. <laughs> so off you go, up in the air. You land in Vegas. I scoop you up. We're here. I'm still, I think I was still panicked. <gasps> Even when I landed, I was like, I almost yeah, died, Dan. you went straight to an airplane. <laughs> like, and then I almost died. You went straight to an airplane, <laughs> yes. Got my upgraded seat right before I got on the plane because so many of the flights were delayed because of the snowstorm. Yeah. So many of the flights were delayed. They blocked off seat changes, and then the lady came over the thing and said if, that if you were waiting for a seat on the plane, they were going to unlock the seats, and she was going to get people in seats. And I mm. opened up my app, kept refreshing it, and in like 30 seconds, she unlocked the seats, and I took a Delta Comfort seat instead of a main cabin seat because I wanted the bigger seat, so I got the more comfortable seat on the plane. Got to get that Delta Comfort seat. And that it, was a win? It does. It does help. Tomorrow, I'll be flying in style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm flying first class. I've never flown first class. Can you vlog it? I will. I will vlog, vlog it. it. The, I, the businessman next to you is going to be like, dude, pretend you've been here before. And I <laughs> only did it because the budget they had on the flight, the ticket only is going to, the, the whole entire flight here is only co going to cost me $100. And I'm like, $100 to have the first class experience? I'm doing it. When uh, when, like, when I leave and stuff, when I check in, it, it, it'll say, oh, would you like to upgrade? And I click on yes, and it's $1,300 upgrade to first right? class. And I say, close the app. <laughs> like, <laughs> close the app. <laughs> so we get here. We're at the Luxor. We unload all our stuff. We're in the suite here. We're up on the 22nd floor. The this highest floor, floor only has like one, two, three, four, five, ten rooms on it. Yeah. A bunch of crummy elevators. No ice. Oh, wait. Dan, why? Because people are going nuts right now. Why are you? Where's your ice? Ice bucket, no ice machine, no clue where it's at. Yep. I don't know in which like tome it's hidden in, <laughs> but there is no ice machine up on the top floor here. No. No ice machine at all. So yeah, so I'm drinking warm, smooth, beautiful Suntory whiskey. <laughs> but yeah, so this place is just, just a place. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, so yeah, don't get stuck on the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, no heat. And we didn't really even do anything the first night. The first night, it was just like, we're here. We, we uh, gambled a little bit. We gambled a little bit. We pretty much were, it. yeah, we pretty much were yeah. preparing for like. For CES. Walking a bajillion steps for a few days in a row. Walking which we a did. bajillion steps. We walked a bajillion steps. We did. I hear something. So. <gasps> yes. Oh, my gosh. Somebody's here. Room oh service. Right back. Okay, you go get it. All right. Room service is here. I'm a little disappointed. I, we're just Luxor bashing. Don't worry. It'll get onto the good stuff. Yeah. I always thought it was going to come push it on a cart. I mean, it should, but we're at the Luxor, not oh the MGM gosh. Grand. or Let's, Which I don't even know if they do that there. MGM properties, I'm just saying. 
We could have been at the La Fontainebleau. But I couldn't say it, so they wouldn't let me in. Right? I can't say it either. All right. I want to check out what this is here, and then we'll pause for some dinner. All right. We're going to pause for some dinner, but first we're going we're gonna to peek at the food. Look at the food. <laughs> my favorite part is when they put, my, when they put my, not, my pokey nacho chips under the hot food. But this is... Uh, chicken fingers. Your chicken fingers. Because I'm a child. And then this is salmon. Oh, that does look good. The salmon does. The salmon does look pretty good. I'm like gonna take green my stuff first bite of salmon. Well, you're doing it on the podcast. Okay. Holy cow, Dan! This guy wasn't stingy on the ketchup. I was just gonna say you got all the ketchups. I don't know what we need ketchup for. Salmon. Cajun lime, crusted salmon. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. That's good. Okay, I want to bite. That is very good. Yeah, you want to try this? Uh-huh. Yes. I want to bite. Yeah, I want to try it. That's a lot of money. Oh, my gosh. I don't want any, it of, was. That, I don't want any of that green stuff, though. That's good salmon. That's really good salmon. It is. That is really good salmon. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a fishy taste to it all, so mm. I approve. I'm The poke nachos will be good, and I'm sure your, mm -hmm. uh, your chicken my, fingers My kids' good. menu food. Yes. So... <laughs> I mean, the pause is going to be a microsecond. We'll get on to CES and like magic. all the stuff that we learned and saw that was so cool. Yeah. Do the magic thing again. And we're back. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, <laughs> go. We're back. All right. So dinner was pretty good. I do like the salmon. That was pretty good. That it was good. Yeah. That was pretty good salmon. You could keep your broccoli. Was that broccoli? Is that what it was like? Broccoli sprouts I don't know. that tasted I like don't, nothing? I don't know. I don't know. There was a big scab in my rice peel off. Yeah. That's what peeled off was the scab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All my right. chicken tenders tasted just like they're supposed to. Yeah. A okay. That's why you get them. -okay. Those, those poke nachos were good, though. But yeah. yes. Yes. Those, you can't really screw up to chicken tenders. Can't I'm really just screw saying. Up chicken tenders. <laughs> all right. So we're off to CES. CES. Yes. It's a little bit up the road. So we get in my car. We drive all the way up to CES. Um, we do have a parking pass. Thank you. Yes. yes. <laughs> it, it did come with our it did come with our room. Yes. So we get to the CES. This place is huge. It's spread out through that Las Vegas Convention Center, through multiple hotels that you have to drive through, but the big meat and potatoes that we've learned is in the convention the center. The convention. Yeah. The convention center. All right, so we get to CES. It's there's a million I heard there was gonna be over hundred and eighty thousand people there. There was so many people. So many people. And it was Wednesday, right? It, it was Wednesday. Was, yeah, Wednesday it, was the first day. It was Wednesday, and, and, and it started over the weekend uh, yep. where it was media day, and we did have media passes. We did, and if we get to come back next year and we possibly get media passes, we might come earlier and use those. Yes, yes, because uh, they show off all the latest and greatest the weekend before, so you get to talk about all the stuff that was right. there. I did watch another person's live stream where they were streaming, so you got to see the cool, like, what was it, like the clear TVs? Yeah, the transparent uh, TVs. The ice cream makers, the robot dogs, like all the cool yeah. stuff, you know, they introduced to you in the earlier days. Yeah. So we got there, like, on actual day one. Some of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to see if I, I wanted to meet iJustine. And guess what? Guess what? We'll get to that. <laughs> I wanted to meet uh, um, Plain Rock 124. He was one of my other favorite people. And guess what? <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> yes. And I wanted to see, like, a bendy screens, and I wanted to right. see robot dogs and stuff like that. And, and, and it's just packed of people. Yeah. It's packed of people. And one of my favorite things, you know, I like, I like Japanese culture, and, and, and I really like foreigners, and it was just foreigner city nobody was from america uh, i understand they have to have it here because you're showing america the tech right but right. oh my gosh did the rest of the world come here yeah. to hang out with the rest of the world not just the rest of the world like the attendees like the booths like you know the the we, the ecoflow people so i worked with ecoflow and they had a booth here and they all flew in from hong kong they all flew in from hong like kong like their and, entire team yes they're not they're not from here they flew in from hong kong so they had to fly all of that stuff mm -hmm. in all of their booths they stuff. had a big booth they had, they had an a RV big booth and stuff. yeah yes um, ecoflow is the battery, battery backup generators. systems for more than just i mean it could be your computers but like we can do rv stuff we yes. can do the television the refrigerators and stuff like we'll that we'll put an affiliate link for it yeah. down below <laughs> yeah yes yeah. so they were one of the booths you know when we said when we saw that there were some people that you work with yeah well we work with you yeah. know um uh going there we went to go check out their, i didn't their know booths. i didn't know they were going to be here until like the day i got here and then i saw something that I, I can't remember what it was. I saw a video or something and I saw them. So I emailed them and I was like, hey, you guys are actually here? And they were like, yeah, come over to the booth. Well, they had a gift for me and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I went over there and I met, I didn't meet the girl that I directly work with because she stayed in Hong Kong. 
but I met Clara was her name. Yes. And oh my gosh, she was like the sweetest person ever. I thought you two were like, Oh. Corresponded all the time. No, nope, never met her in my yeah. life. Sweetest person ever. She was so nice. I was bummed that uh, we were talking about going back so we could say bye to everybody, but we didn't. We didn't make it back to go say bye to everybody. No, no, no. But it, it could, it's just a sea of people. It's too stimulating. It's insane. So much. You stuff. know, like at the pet conventions and stuff. Maybe it's quite not for me as far as like. Um, there's nothing for me at that booth or that booth. Right. This thing was just made for Dan. Yeah. It was. crazy. Crazy, it was nuts. Stimulated to the max. Yeah, we saw a lot of cool stuff. We saw a lot of cool stuff. Like, stuff that makes your hair stand up on your arms. Like a two million dollar car parked in front of some scooters. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, like the Bugatti in front of scooters or the jumping dog. <laughs> that was Jamie's line. There's a two million dollar car parked in, in front, front of front scooters. Of scooters. <laughs> so we get there. It is full, like I said, uh, full of uh, foreigners. Is that the right per term for? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, full of free people from from America, and right. it's great. So many Japanese people, and I know you know a fair amount of Japanese. So interaction was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it was great. I just was so blown away. I just wanted to talk to every single person. I wanted to make friends with every. I felt like Buddy Elf. I just wanted <laughs> yeah. to make friends with everybody. Uh, the tech was so crazy. It was so loud, but. In the pet conventions, the walls are this high. There's like the booths block off things where yes. you feel like you can't just look around and see everything. You feel like, oh, that's the end of it. No, on the other side of the wall, Sony and yeah, and 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 um, it's like Jurassic Park. Spare no expense. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people instead of just having like a standard open booth, they built like studios inside the building. You know, like Samsung, you had to wait in line to enter in. Well, you know. The normal people had to wait. We had media passes, so we were able to kind of like <laughs> sneak it. It was our only one flex. Yeah, yeah. It was yes. our only one flex. I saw somebody else do it in another video, yeah. and and it worked. So we were able so to skip a line to go into the Samsung booth. But like they built like a whole studio. Like I think I texted Jamie and I'm like, the Samsung booth is four times the size of our house mm -hmm. inside of the convention center. Yes. And and if, and that. Sam, what do you say, Samsung? Yeah. Samsung needed other tech to make their booth. Like it's like, yes. look at the text tech. <laughs> lots of projectors, shiny people's messages yes. on the screen. Lots of holograms. Yes, lots holograms of holograms. Holograms are here to stay. And transparent TVs. And transparent TVs, which, which I is still don't understand. There. The it's point almost of. there. It's it's not quite what we need yet, but right. it's almost it's almost there. We're gonna have a clear house one day. Yeah, it maybe maybe. We're gonna have a clear house one day. We're gonna be able to turn on and off the walls, and then the power's gonna go out, and you're gonna see all of us in our <laughs> birthday suits as there's a big blackout. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my, oh my gosh! It was oh my gosh! It was so much. Like we walked in. I feel like when we got there, we just immediately were like. Distracted by everything. Yes, everything. It just hit us. And yeah. we didn't make it more than 50 yards in the door for the first hour. Yeah. Pinball machines are going off and yeah. video games and the little my arcade and, things that we saw, yeah. the little mini things that we saw. Yes. Those were cool. There was, I, it's all a blur, but there was so much cool stuff. So much cool stuff. So many people I wanted to be friends with. Right. So many people I wanted to be friends with there. So we walk around, uh, we see all this stuff. We go and see your buddies at Cyrusher. Yes. The purpose of, it, us being there in the right, first place right we're like we got to get the job done we have gotta to go the there we have to go we saw the ecoflow booth first so we did stop there right. and, and talk to them and then we went to the <clears throat> Rusher booth and they showed off they showed us all of their new bikes that are coming out for this year which hopefully we'll get to do some reviews of for you guys because they they were really cool looking yeah i'll put a picture up of uh, the bikes that they were showing off there you guys let us know which one which one you like right but it was interesting we got there we did our business we hung out with them and stuff like that and they were like really excited to see you yeah and they gave a catalog so we, we could check all the new stuff uh they didn't have they had more than just bikes there yeah 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 so they also have a um electric snowboard where you have to wear a backpack with the battery in it and you stand on a snowboard and it's got this wheel and it's it's not made for like snowboarding snowboarding it's more designed for like flatter trails because it's got a wheel in the back of it but kind you of can a to still B. yeah you know like like those what's that um who's Casey Neistat. Yes. I had to yeah. Be. <laughs> like a like, like a boosted board. Like a boosted. Yeah. But like they also that. had. They, like, I don't know if you saw those. They also have electric skateboards as well. They had two of them sitting there. Mm, they so did. they had the electric skateboards, and then they have an electric surfboard, which was really cool looking. So maybe we'll get to review one or two of those things. I oh, that would be so. cool. It would be so cool. That would be so cool. And Jamie, little kid bikes. They had little kid bikes. They did have little thing. kid yeah, bikes that were e power too. Yeah. And those are getting lighter and lighter by the year. Oh, yeah. Jamie asked for. for the, the surfboard. The surfboard. Yeah, I was like, oh, I told them that we would do the snowboard. And he goes, I want the surfboard. And I went, oh, okay, well, I'll tell them that. <laughs> oh, 
Alpina 5 might be coming soon. He's like, I could take it down the river. And I went, I mean, uh, I... Okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'll watch that. I have no <laughs> desire to be on a surfboard. I want to see how that goes. I mean, Jamie would do it. I know he would do it. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a surfboard and review a surfboard. Do you have a favorite thing that we saw there on the first day? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. It's such a blur. It was it's such a it blur. It was an electronic blur. I I, I was trying to, because I knew you were going to ask me, like, what was your favorite thing that you saw? I have no idea. You know, it wouldn't have been the first day, though. But I think the thing that impressed me the most, or like that I didn't want to stop looking at, was the micro LED Samsung TVs. And to be fair, I'm an, I'm an LG fan like i have lg tvs and lg refrigerator lg washer and dryer i am an lg household so we looked at the lg stuff but i i had to give it to samsung like that micro led tv that you could get this close to and you still couldn't see it the pixels didn't on. get pixel and it i know it's beautiful. their best cameras that match right it doesn't matter they they showed us the best of the best better than their best of the yeah. best you know when you when you're at home watching big bang theory it's not gonna look like that right but it, it wow wow it was beautiful no no glare on the side of the screens no blur no d- loss I, I, there's this thin yeah and i didn't think a tv was gonna be the thing that stuck out the most but it is that's what i think stuck out more than anything else like the eco flow had really cool stuff but i've seen a lot of their stuff and same thing like with the cy rusher i don't want to pick the bikes being the coolest thing because they did have this really cool teal bike that I really, really right. liked. But, like, I've seen those before. We've seen those before. You know, so, like, of something I've never really experienced, I guess, would have been that. And right. that red car. <laughs> the red uh, Mercedes? Yeah. Was... The Mercedes and the, what was it, the Charger that they had? The that red Charger. Char- oh, the red Charger, yeah. yeah and the, the Bugatti was kind of cool to see, and the too. Bugatti. Lots <laughs> of car tech there. That, I was going to say, not that any of those had anything to do no, with tech. No, but... lo- lots of car tech there. Lots yeah. Of, like, lots of car tech there. Lots of car we, tech. We were, I guess we'll just, ju- it doesn't matter, we'll jump around. We were outside at the BMW booth one of the next days because we wanted to go back to see the outside area yeah. there. Because there's just, it's just so massive. There's not enough time to get talking to the people. And 20 minutes goes by every time we talk to somebody. Uh, people people like the hair. So, we have, so yeah. uh, it's instant conversation starter. So we're buddies with everybody so the next day we go out there to the bmw place and we're out there checking out the bmws and there's a new valet service thing that they're working on and i could only have it so and you can see in the video there's people there almost like on a sim racing thing controlling the real cars and i think what happens is like i pull up to the target i get out of my car and a service takes over my car and goes and parks it for me and then yeah. brings it back around when i'm done to come pick me up i be, i could be wrong but i believe that's what they were kind that's of trying what they to were show showing. there yeah but it's, it's just so insane so crazy the sim racing there was oh yeah huge yeah. sim racing is here i love yeah, it because i'm a sim racer that, i have a sim racer they had tons of that tons stuff there that was that. really cool too my favorite thing was the holograms we're getting holograms yeah. people you don't need a box you don't need a tupac mirror thing with with um with fog machines yeah yeah it's spinning fans in little you know in inches from each other so you have some depth and it's spinning at a refresh rate that it's you know it's showing the picture on the little lights right and that's it yeah that's it that's it you, you probably have to set up like two cameras or whatever to capture the four cameras but that's it you don't need a million dollars to do holograms and they're almost there yeah they're almost yeah, there. Yeah, those were really cool to see that was that that's, was another thing that that's was really coming cool grandma's see. gonna get to see little johnny uh in a hologram sooner Help than me, you Obi-Wan think Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Hope. <laughs> and why wasn't that one of the holograms that know, were there but it should have been oh my gosh i don't even know it was just insanely stimulating it was so stimulating and the future the future is cool we went to the google and electronic booth. we went to the google booth we went to the google we booth. got to see all the google things the guy right away that was showing off the the Pixel stuff, he realized I had a Pixel 2 watch and the phone. And he was like, oh, you already know all of this. Yeah, you were giving the spiel at one of the little like oh, areas. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I guess I don't have to tell you that. Yeah, for the AI wallpapers, I was telling Dan how they worked. And the guy was like, keep going. <laughs> I'm like, oh, will you give me a job? You uh, know who wasn't there was Apple. You're right. Apple wasn't there at yeah. all. Well, I mean, you know why. It. They don't, they don't need, need it. it. No, their tech sucks. I'm insanely impressed with the <laughs> smartphone. Throughout the okay, so we're, we're here. Obviously, I have an iPhone, and Jess has got the Pixel, Eight the Pro. Pixel bigger. It's in there. Bigger member than mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm I do. Oh, sorry. 
we do all the vlogging and stuff now on our phones. Half the time it's like, hey, Jess, could you just please take a picture of me over the, could you just use your phone? <laughs> like the, and maybe the pros are better. I just. I was going to say, to be fair, you maybe. can't really compare your phone to my phone. I mean, we can, because but like, mine's better anyway. The AI make, tech on my phone the is AI better, tech's better Which is why it still blows my mind that you choose an Apple phone over an Android phone because the AI and Android phones, I think you would have so much more fun with, but. Here. Buy me, buy me, and <laughs> buy me a Google phone, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll throw that away. Yeah, I'll throw That's it away. It I'll put it in the garbage disposal on a podcast. I have to buy you the phone. Yeah. How bad do you want me to switch? I mean, it's not my phone. I, I, I'll just have a phone that's better than yours if, for always. If I switch, though, you'll have nothing to razz me about. Oh, I find something else. So, <laughs> so, so the Google booth was was pretty cool. They were showing off all their tech and, and stuff like that. I got pins. You got some pins yep. from there. Yeah. So we spent a lot of hours walking, parking, and checking out just just crazy tech. And on the Being third overwhelmed day of Christmas, my true I Santa. get out of the car, and the first thing that I see when I get out of the parking garage is I Justine. And they were, it was her and her crew, and they were done, or they were right. filming something. And it was, there was, and there was nobody in the world but her and I. And I'm like, oh, nice. I really do. It's the Truman Show for me. I yeah. swear. So then, you know, I talked to her for just a minute. I get a picture and stuff like that. Look at you. Could see me goon. What a goon <laughs> pig. Come on. Uh, I'm like melt. I'm like Urgh. right. So there you go. I like your stuff. Off you go. Yep. Um. So I was pretty happy. I was like, oh, okay. That's. That was that was worth it right there. Like I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just want to meet her. Like I, I, we watched her stuff. I, I met her in like 2015 briefly with Zach when we were at VidCon. Right. And so like, but I knew she was gonna be here. So I'm like, oh look, Easter egg. You're never gonna see her. There's so many people so here. So many people. Yeah, yeah. So then and like, then there she was. There she was. And then like 15 minutes later, there was Plain Rock One Two Four. Yeah. And there he was. Yep. And I got to go talk to him for a second too. So oh my gosh, like. I should have willed a pizza in existence. Like, can I see pizza? Yeah. And there it was. Could have been there. And there it was. You got to go down there and uh, will some some money out of those machines into existence. Oh, man. I'm not having a good time with that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, we're done with CES uh, during the day. And this is what, you know, I had our badges. You know, these are little badges and they scan your badges and stuff like that. I have this stuff here. So, I didn't, you know, uh, for talking points. Right. Right. So, so, we're done with CES. We come back to hang out. Uh, we, you know, we... It's quicker to go to Mulder to destroy the rings than it is for us to pick food. We're so bad at that. Yeah. We're so bad at that. I don't even that. remember what we had. We were like, we ended up going to New York, New York. Yeah. Which was a little bit of a walk of a way to go to this like little diner. Especially because the walkway from here to the one thing is closed. So it, the arrows point you the one way, but you can't actually go there. <laughs> we've, we've been lost in the casino so much. So many times. So many times. But it's okay because it's so stimulating. And we get distracted so easily. We so were on easy. our way to, that was what it was. We were on our way to go get dinner at New York, New That's York. And we ran into the Japanese people that yes. were paying the pig game. Yes, pig game. So we hung out with them for like 30, 40 minutes? Yeah, because it they while. wanted the, it was the pig game, which you guys have seen in my videos that my mom played when we were up in Mackinac, or not Mackinac, Petoskey, um, where like you play the game and the pigs get fatter and then eventually you win the bonus game or whatever. Yeah. And so, but it wasn't, it wasn't pigs, it was fish bowls. It was, That's what it was. It was, it was fish, fish bowls. bowls. It was fish bowls with the colored fish. So it was the same type of concept. Um, the yeah, fish bowls, see the visuals. The fish bowls fill up, and then the glass has to shatter. And that guy said he put like $120 in the he machine. He said he'd done 120 And two of the fish were ready to pop. And then you put... I think twenty bucks, forty bucks. 40 did bucks? Do, I did forty. Forty bucks. In I the did machine. forty bucks in the machine. It didn't pop, but we had so much fun for with everybody. We were just oh, yeah. so and forty then, bucks. I was like, Ugh. so I got up. And Jess sat down and started playing. Jess is so lucky all the time. Jess is just always winning. So me and my new buddies were like, yeah, we're having fun. And, and Jess, um, I, I think it was like the third or fourth poll. It popped. It popped. But like, hold on. But it popped. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're rich. Because the popped one said like 5,200 something. And I'm like, That's oh, my gosh. I'm like, we're doing sake bombs. <laughs> It's sake bombs for everybody in the whole place. Right. So, yeah. So then it pops. And then, I don't know. You get to play like a multi-game? or Yeah. A it's game? a bonus game. You get to play a bonus game. I think that one was the spins. I got extra spins or something. I don't even remember. Um, but, yeah. We won like $4.80, I think. But for the like five minutes that was bonus gaming, I, I was just like, wow, $100. It had to have been 100 bucks. It wasn't 100 bucks. I'll sizzle no steak. But... I had a lot of fun. It was fun. Yes. Yeah, and that's one of the things. That was the thing I tried to explain to you about gambling. You never want to bet more than you are willing to lose. <clears throat> and it really is one of those things where, like, you you want $20 worth of entertainment. You can get $20 worth of entertainment on the right machine if you know what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. 
But you have to be willing to walk away knowing that you spent $20 and you're, you're not getting it back. Yeah, a lot of people make the right. mistake when they go gambling. They're like, I'm going to go gambling and I'm going to win all this money and all these things are going to happen. No, you should never assume that. You should assume you're going in there, you're spending some money for entertainment purposes. If you're lucky, you'll walk out of there with the same amount or a little bit more than you walked, or you'll, or you'll win big. There's always a chance you can win big. But you can't. Like so many people get so mad when they lose money gambling, and it's like you're going to lose money. That's it's the yeah. house. Like the house is st- is tilted to win. Yes, that's just the way it is. <laughs> that's that, that's just the way it is. So yep. I the last six times I've been to Vegas, uh, I've lost a total of forty dollars, and that was two nights ago. So like not a big deal. Like yeah. I had no problem sticking another twenty in there. We were all having a good time and stuff like yeah. that. But I don't. I have I have that desire to go like buy something or do something then to put it in there a little bit. Right. But you're just so dang good at it. So of course when you sit down and I knew it. I already had the camera. I already right? I already, I already <laughs> knew it. So yeah. So eventually we make it over because uh, to to uh, New York, New York. Yeah. But it is freezing dang cold. It's in the forties. It, it was the coldest day. It was cold. that day, and it was forty that day. Yeah, I should have brought a jacket, a real yeah. jacket, not just like a zippy hood. Yeah. I should have I should have brought a jacket. So. Yeah, we went over there and hung out and had some dinner. And yep, yep, and then walked all the way back and froze. <laughs> it was so weird, though, because, okay, you guys remember the credit story. Uh, we call ahead because MGM owns so much stuff, and it, apparently it's good at all MGM places. Yeah, so, so the, the dining credit. The, the dining, dining credit, credit was good to use at any MGM property minus the, the food, food courts. courts. Or mid-mall eateries. Right. Uh, and it was also, like, not good for tips. Right. Uh, so it was so weird to be, like, way over there at two casinos away and like could you charge it to the luxor room please and they did and they did and they did it was so neat it, it, it worked it, it worked it worked yeah so uh that was just a story of our indecisions of of uh spending that money so that way tonight i didn't feel too bad by getting like all this crazy stuff because i did not want it to just go to, just, no no We're just like, we go gotta to spend their money we gotta spend their money so we did <laughs> <laughs> i think there's like 50 dollars left maybe we could order dessert after this are you serious? I mean, there's... how do you don't text the group chat? I don't know. How do we not forget that? <laughs> I won't forget. Oh my gosh, we gotta order some. <laughs> we gotta order some dessert. So we're like, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna go to a show? Are we gonna do what? So we start looking up shows. I saw that Medieval Times. Oh, it's called uh, Tournament of Champions. Yes, it's Medieval Times. We find tickets. I'm so ready to go. I call the lady. We're ready to order the tickets. Um, she said we could charge them to the room. I was so excited. And then I was a week away. Yeah. It's not, they're not here. It's still January. So a lot of stuff's closed. Yeah. A lot of stuff is closed right now. A lot of places are closed. A lot of the show, <clears throat> a lot of the shows are on like whatever their winter break, I their guess. Their winter break. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause like Piff wasn't here. He's, and he does weekly shows as well, but he's doing the America's Got Talent thing right now. So he wasn't here. Uh, the Michael Jackson show was closed this week. It was closed. It okay. wasn't, it wasn't booked. It was actually closed this week. So there was a lot of the shows that are closed down for winter break or whatever. Yeah, so I was a little bummed out that I was off by a week because I was ready to go and like throw chicken bones. Right and... before that, we were looking at the J. Owen Experience. Oh, that's look, it's, it's, it's right over right there. Right down there, it looks like a circus tent. <laughs> yep. Oh uh, yeah, it's literally right out here. We're facing out the front of the Dorito. <laughs> the front of the Dorito. Yes. And we, do we talk about how they made a, a Dorito? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're out the front of the Dorito, out of the front of the Luxor. It's just right down there in the parking lot. You can Google this. Dude, there was a tent there. Just saw a liger or a tiger, uh, a, tiger or a tiger, and I was like, "All right, let's go do that." Then we started looking the dude up. Yeah, very eccentric. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe like, maybe like him and Carol Baskins could be like on the same kind of level. Maybe I don't know. It's an illusionist show. It's about so like it's a magic show. But then we watched a review from this guy who saw it. Like, what did he say? Like a month ago. Yeah. And oh my gosh, he told us everything we needed to know about how bad his magic trick w- tricks were and how he bought these magic tricks out of a magic book catalog. He's like, he's like, this is nothing. And then he was talking about how he was comparing him to David Copperfield, and he's like, David Copperfield's personality is horrible, but for what for what you get, you get thirty minutes of good magic. And he's like, with this guy, you don't get good magic. So we watched this guy complain and stand out, do the review from out in front of the tent. Like he walked out of the tent and the tent's behind him and he's literally going, don't waste your money. It's $80 a ticket. This should be a $30 show. And I still wouldn't go. And I went, oh, we're not going to that. (laughs) No, then we looked up some reviews and um, he had cats. He had cats, cats. but PETA stopped him from bringing the cats here. Uh, They were protesting and doing all these things. And I guess they got the city of the city to kind of say, no, we don't want you to have the cats here because he wanted to keep the cats on the property. And they were worried that 
what if they get out? What if they escape? And he was talking about how the interview I saw, he was talking about how we're going to have four fences and armed security. And there's going to be people that are going to know what to do and how to kill the cats when they escape. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that was what I said. If he knows magic, can you just make them disappear? Right. I'm like, wait, four fences and armed security. Maybe these tigers shouldn't be here because could you imagine if a tiger got loose and was just running up and down the strip? That would be insane. I mean, hey, I've seen crazier. <laughs> um, I, I, the dude that was giving the review was like, oh, he made an elephant disappear, and it was three dudes in a suit, mm-hmm. in an elephant suit. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, my gosh, that's almost worth the price of, a, of admission. $80 right for tickets for that. $80. I, to sit in a tent which with what I believe had no heat. No, there could not have been heat. And it was 40 I don't degrees. have any heat. Don't. We we did not go. This morning, I I got up this morning and uh, I was just staring out the uh, out the window. If you can see in the, uh, it's hard to see in the reflection, but it's right. it's two stories tall in here, and you can see all the way out there. And I was just staring out there, and I swear, I watched him come out in little bunny slippers and a robe this morning while he was drinking his coffee outside his tent. <laughs> so we skipped out on that. Yeah, we skipped out on that show, and a lot of the stuff was closed. So um, it's not. Crowd, it was crowded for CES, right? Uh, and it's crowded on a Friday night. But there, since the shows aren't really going on, the casino areas are pretty dang dead. Yeah, they're yeah, pre- are pretty dang dead. Yeah, there's definitely not as many. There's more people today. There's more people today. But there's more people checking in. Today. I also think that there's just not. It's winter time. There's not as many people. And it's know. a cold winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till I get home. It's gonna be a whole whopping 15 degrees. <sighs> <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. <laughs> We're gonna freeze um, if so, I make it home. <laughs> if you make it home. So before we move on from CES, uh, that was that was pretty much all the highlights, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You'll, you'll just watch the vlog and just see how I was. Well, even you and I just eyes open. Yeah. So mesmerized. Not knowing what to film. Not knowing what to film. Everything's a thing. Everything's a thing. Yeah. It, it's just it's just insane. I recommend if you ever have a chance to go. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Half the stuff will never come to market, and the other half of the stuff, you're like, wow, the future is really going um, they had electric. A flying, they had two flying cars. One of them that they were cars. actually showing flying, and the other one that just looked really weird. Yeah, <laughs> it, it did. But the future is electric cells with a lot of power and small things. Yeah. Small things. Soon we're not going to have to charge our phones for a week right, anymore. Right. And you're never going to have to go to a NASCAR event and camp in the infield and hear generators. Generators aren't going to have to go off at 11 o'clock anymore at the yeah. campsite. They're just silent now and batteries yeah. and they last for a week. EcoFlow. EcoFlow. But mm-hmm. yes, the electricity thing, the Tesla genre is yeah. here. Yeah. It is here and it's being put into all kinds of things. I've seen it in the drills there. Yeah, yep. and I've seen it in, in anything that's got electricity. It's becoming more powerful and lighter. One more thing before we stop talking about CES. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan got to sit in a real tractor. <gasps> I did. <laughs> it was pretty great. I just thought that was cool. That was a fun moment. I thought it was funny when we walked by. I'm like, John Deere is here? And then I thought about it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess they have a lot of tech in their tractors. They really do. They do. You know, they can drive themselves. They do. You know, and they got the GPS so you know where you've been on all your things. So I just thought that I thought that was kind of cool. What a beautiful piece of equipment. It those really is. Are. You're yeah. sitting up so high. It's massive. When I sat down on that seat, it was so cushioned, like the bus and that's, lady. And that's because I mean, you've been out in the field at the farm, and it's so bumpy. That's why. So it's, as they're out there, you're like, it's just super comfortable. In, Sirius insane. XM radios on the inside, yes. GPS. Tra- Tracking, like that's yeah. a machine. Tech is in everything right now, yeah. and tech is smarter than ever. Yeah, tech is definitely smarter than ever. I forgot that was that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was a good one. And I turned myself into a hologram. It was yeah, so it was so cool. But yeah, please go watch go watch our vlogs. We'll you'll, link them down below. You'll get to see all all the crazy stuff. We could go we could go on and on forever and ever. So I think that brings us. What other key moments? I think that brings us to today. Yeah, pretty much. This is our last day. It's Friday. It's Friday, Friday. Friday. And before we got here, so, so what happens when, when we hang out, we plan a hundred things, we do three. Yeah, pretty much. hundred things, we do three. That's the story of my life. A hundred things, do three? Oh, uh, yeah. Plan yeah. things, do nothing. So, <laughs> so we plan to do a hundred things. One of the hundred things we plan, uh, what was a, a bagel shop? It was yep. a, a pin for your pins. There was a pin shop. Yep. Nah, I'll yeah. do that next time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> was going to Red Rock. Was going to Red Rock Canyon. Red yes. Rock Canyon. Yeah. So I had a doctor's appointment a couple of weeks ago, and 
I was telling her about how I was going to Vegas and she pulled out her phone and she was like, you have to go here. It's only 15 minutes outside of the city and it's one of the coolest places and it's only 15 minutes outside of the city. Okay, well, it's 15 minutes outside of the city, but it was 30 minutes from our hotel. <laughs> but uh, she showed me all these pictures and I'm like, that's really cool. Maybe we should do that. Then I went home and I looked it up and even Jamie said, he's like, you should do that. That looks really pretty. And you guys know, like, I like outside. Very much your style. Yeah, yeah. Very much your I style. I like outside. So I'm like we should go do this. We should do this. And I didn't actually think we were going to get to do it. Like when we got to today, I'm like, we're not going, there's no way we're going to end up well, going. Well, because Jamie and you were theorizing of like, well, maybe when we get to the first day, we should go at like sunrise. Right. Jamie tried to talk us into sunrise. Yeah. Well, he tried to talk us into sunrise in, yeah. or something. Yeah. He tried to talk us into going like the first day and have that be the first thing we did to get it out of the way and be there early. And yeah, like we would get the right lighting and blah, 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 which to be fair, we had two days of sun, and we went today, and it was cloudy. <laughs> it was cloudy. It was. It was. But it was 10 degrees. It was warmer. Yeah. And that made all the difference, and we yes. still melted. And, and I, we still froze. I think that's the reason why we had. I had thought yesterday that we probably wouldn't end up doing it because it was cold. I'm like, if it's this cold, there's no way. I'm not going to make Dan walk around in the cold. Because yeah, there's a chance that we'll be back for Super Zoo in September. and August. The, August. And we. it was a little bit better weather or to the warmer side but i was worried if we come back in august and do it it's going to be 105 degrees like it was there and okay. uh, uh i love outside but when it's 105 degrees i love air conditioning fair <laughs> fair yeah you're like you you live the temperature lifestyle of frosty the snowman yes. the, car the cartoon yeah. version yeah yes so <laughs> So we started uh, driving out of town. Yep. It didn't. It, it didn't take us long to get there at all. No, the longest part was just kind of getting off of the strip area. Yeah. And and um. We full, pull up to the reserve. We're like, let's go to the reserve first. Sanctuary conserve. Or I'm sorry, like, conserve. I can never say that word. You know where they build a little building for you to go see the people. Visitor center. Where you go see the awesome people that are usually retired that volunteer. Yeah. That's so. I wonder when I get. I won't change the subject too much. When I get like old and done. Well, like what will my like? Oh, I just do this to keep myself young and spry. Like I wonder what the. I'll just like keep live streaming. Propane pigs. Propane pigs. I love Jamie's dad's propane pig. Robert's <laughs> propane pig. Oh, he sent me one. It's pink. It's beautiful. Okay. So we get to the visitor center. We go inside and, and Pam was just the greatest. And we talked oh to gosh, her for like yes. a half an hour. She was so nice. Yes. Yes. She showed us the loop. It's like a 13 mile an she hour She asked loop. us specifically about hiking. And we were, I was like, we just hiked 30,000 steps two days in a row. I don't want to hike anything so she was really good at telling us like where to go to not have to hike to see it right because i'm not trying to get wedged in a rock yeah i'm not right. trying to no 27 hours for 100, to... 100 no 127 hours for us no it's 20 it would be 27 minutes for me and i'd be crying <laughs> i'd be crying <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah we went we went there and there's a scenic loop drive that you can take and it's a one-way road and it's 13 miles mm -hmm. and uh dan almost peed himself Climbing up on a rock. And he oh. almost peed himself watching me climb up on a rock and going, don't go over there, don't go over there. Which, I know how that feels. And I probably shouldn't have done it because Jamie does the same thing to me. And I go, don't go over there, don't go over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were getting like... Too close to the too edge. Too close to the edge. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some pictures on there. The first stop was like the big main thing. People were rock, Red rock. climbing. Yeah. There was a lot of people there. Still a lot of... Uh, flow over from CES. Yeah. So it was really cool to see people that weren't from this country experience thing. The one lady in Japanese was just going, this is so cool. This is so cool. It's so sugoi, sugoi. She was just like mind blown because it's visually just not what they're used to seeing. It was just, it was, it was so neat. Yeah. It wasn't well, even, crowded. No, it wasn't crowded. And then that's like the thing I know, like you were saying, you know, this looks a lot like my town and that's, I don't have, I don't have mountains. So it's, to me, like, I was just staring out Even the window you, the whole yeah. time. I'm like, it's, it's beautiful. I don't have this. I have trees. and But you do the same thing when you come to where I live. Like, when we drive around and we take you camping, you're like, like everything's the, amazing. And, and there's, there's a tree every, like, 10 feet. And, right? and, and, and the forest is dense where you're at yeah. and stuff. So, I, yeah, I, yeah. I get it. And even... And even for me, these rocks were a little bit different. They were super red. Super red. Super red rocks. And we found out from Jamie that it's because there's iron in the rocks. There's that that's iron. what makes them red. Iron. I asked him because I kept telling Dan, I'm like, I bet Jamie would know. So I texted him and I'm like, I don't mm. want to look it up. Can you tell me why these rocks are red? I do that with Crystal all the time. <laughs> Crystal will be, oh, Crystal's at work. And I'll call her and I'll be at Walmart. I'll be like, where is aisle is this song? <laughs> even though I know I can just do it myself. But... So where we were at in the rocks we were sitting on, it's still safe. There are huge, there are yeah. billion ton boulders. So we got to check that out, and I will tell you that it was 
the best getaway from the stimulation, from the lights, yes. from just everything that Vegas has to offer. Every time we're down there in public, it's fun hair, Dan. So we're like, it's, 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 it's a thing. It was quiet. Yeah. There was hardly any people around. Yeah. No time limit. That's why outside is nice. It was nice. It yeah. was very nice. It was cold, but it was very, very, very nice. It was. It was when it when the wind hit us was it when was, it, was it was like, cold. okay, it's cold. It was just art. Like it, it was beautiful. We were tired by. It was then. Mother Nature's art gallery. It was. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what it is. And we had slowed down. It was. It was perfect. snow so. on the top of the mountains, and oh, I wanted to go right. to the top of the mountains, but we couldn't do that. But we I could see hiked. the snow. Right. Yeah, no, no. We no, enjoyed no. watching. You, you'd look over there and you're like, oh, that is someone rock climbing. Uh -huh. Yeah. And apparently you could just do whatever you want there. Yeah. All those rocks you saw in the videos and stuff like that, you can climb every last one of them. Yeah. There's nobody to tell you no. Nobody to tell you no, you cannot do that. Nobody to tell you no. So we went on the loop. We were there, I don't know, a couple hours. Yeah, we were there a couple hours. And then uh, nice. we, we realized that we probably should have ate more food than we did. We did, yeah. And we knew we had a podcast. Yeah. And this is our last night. And we had all that food credit. Yeah. And so so uh, when we were done, we scurried back uh, to the city here. We did. We door dashed food, though, because I wanted soup. That's right, huh? Yeah. We yeah. got soup. Because the, because the heat issue that we've been having, the fact that, like, only one heater works, like, I feel like we've been cranking the heat and the dry air is just blowing everywhere. And so it's, like, killing you, our throats. Your room, where does your room sleep? My work? room, the heater in the bedroom works. So I was leaving the bedroom door open and cranking the heater because I was trying to sit at my computer to work and it was freezing. Um, and, and it was just dry air. It was just dry, dry air. And like, that's why I know we all are uh, so dry. But we got tea. Well, that's right. On the way back, we stopped at Albertsons and we mm -hmm. got some tea. Checked out some Hot Wheels. No good Hot Wheels. We got some tea. Yep. We made the tea in the little coffee machine there yep. and stuff like that. Yep. So we got the tea and the honey. Because they don't give you tea in hotel in this hotel room. A lot of the hotel rooms the I go sugar. to, they give you tea. Yeah, we got tea and we got sugar and honey so that we could do that. And yeah. then we ordered from Cafe, <gasps> Cafe Zoops, Cafe Zupa, Zupa, whatever it was. And it was, uh, I got chicken noodle soup in a sandwich. I got like, um, I, I'm down for like the thick white soups. So I this time I got like it was pota potato, southwestern potato. potato soup in yeah. a sandwich. It was good. Yeah. So we came, <clears throat> we came back here for a little bit and we had lunch and then we were like, okay, we're ready to go again because we were you know running low on battery. We didn't have any food. Yes, because our next stop was another thing that we had talked about and I didn't. It's touch and go. I didn't know if we were gonna make it to. There. I wanted to. So I wanted to go to this when when we came to Vegas in August. Like it was like top priority for where I wanted to go on my on my list. I really wanted to go. We did Beatles two nights in a row. Which was amazing. I kind of, <gasps> I kind of wanted to do that again while, while we were here, but I'm like, all right, well, we we've done that. We should do something else, right? Right. So I kind of wanted to do that, and then uh, when we looked up this place when we were here in August, they're like, oh, you need at least two hours to experience it, it and it was ten o'clock and they closed at midnight, and we were like, oh, we have to get over there. We're not going to do it because we just, we're never going to pull it off. I was talked out of it with my family. Now that I look back, they explained it to me a couple times that I was here. I was like, what's this Area 51 thing or something? They're like, you have to like pay for every attraction. And it's just like, all they do is sell you stuff there. Like, I think they were like misinformed Maybe. about what it is. Right. Because it's an art installation. And this, well, there's a lot of other, there's a bar, there's a lot of other we stuff. Didn't, we didn't, yeah. And we didn't say where we went inside Area 51 yet, but. Oh, yes. Right. So the the Area 51 has a bunch of stuff in it, but the place we went inside of there was the Omega Mart. Omega Mart. Yes. So the Omega Mart, if you've never been to it, is a Meow Wolf art installation. And there are multiples of these around the country. There are other places you can go where they have similar but totally different art installations that are like the Omega Mart, and it's a fully immersive experience like what we went through today. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend Sarah, I think, has now been to all of them. I think Sarah has been to all really? of them. Really? Yeah, I'm Is pretty sure. Is this true? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's now hit all of them, because I think she just hit the last one just a couple weeks ago. She posted photos But they it. might not be Omega Marts. At They're the not Omega They're Marts. Just, They're would you call them Meow Cats? Meow, Meow Wolf. Uh, the, the, <coughs> the art installation is by Meow Wolf. And you can look them up online and like you can see where they have the different art installations. Okay. But it's like this immersive world. Dan didn't want to be spoiled on it, so I didn't send you a ton of videos I on it. I only knew a little, like I saw a couple screenshots and stuff like that and I didn't, I didn't know what to expect really. Right, because you walk inside and it looks like a supermarket. Like it looks like you're in a grocery store. But then when you look closer, you realize that everything on the shelf isn't exactly as you think it is no or that you or and everything's not 
anything you could ever come up with in your head. Right. Although almost everything on the shelf is for sale. Yes. Like you can get, uh, what was it? Salt, uh, salted, salted peanuts, nut free. Um, I can't believe it's not butter spray like spray for like yeah. smelling good air that freshener smelling good air yeah. freshener yeah just all kinds of wacko stuff Obviously tattooed you'll chicken see in the video tattooed chicken full travis barker turkey chicken yep. tattooed chicken oh my gosh it, it was i i don't know it was funny because we walk you walk in and it's a supermarket and like i said dan didn't really know what else it was so we're walking around the supermarket we walked around the supermarket part of it for quite a while because you know we were taking all the things in and then i had to explain like Start th seeing things. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you know, go through this crack in the wall because there's a crack in the wall. Yeah. Or open up this freezer door because there's a freezer door. And when you open it up, there's a hallway and then you're in a totally other room. And it, you literally just go from room to room to room to crawl through a tunnel to do all these different things. And it's, it's an art. It, I don't know how to explain it. It's an experience, and I was as stimulated as CES, and I didn't think that something in this world could stimulate me as much as CES, and it was Omega Mart. Yeah. More flashing, more hair standing up yeah. from the lights and stuff. It was beautiful. The employees are all gimmicked out. And yeah. I tried to ask them questions, and she's like, this is just a normal supermarket. And <laughs> it was so crazy, and every room had so much detail, so much detail. Not Nothing was un- um, stylized, right. gimmicked, play right. on words. We went the, the one room had the lasers in it, and if you touched the lasers, it played music, and you could block the different lasers, and it would play different sounds as you did it. The strobe light room. The strobe light room was, was crazy. Was taking our photos somehow, and then in between it blinding you, and you can see for a microsecond, it's shots of of what you were doing on the wall for a second. Yeah, your eyes couldn't do it. Yeah, you, you just. There's no words to describe what I saw, and I'm pretty descriptive. It's It was beautiful. Yeah, for quite a while there, Dan could not uh, form a full sentence. No, I'm going to cry. Like, <laughs> it was just it's so stimulating. In every room, Something there was this one euphoric room that just played this mellow... I didn't want to leave. It was so cool. I sent crowded. Greg I sent Greg a photo and he's like, I feel like that place was made for people who do drugs. And I'm like, no, this place was made for people who don't want to do drugs. <laughs> it's the closest I think that maybe you would be able to see if you did like the fun drugs. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, don't do drugs. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like, you know, I wasn't brave enough for that. So I, <laughs> I, I, I imagine that it was like that. Dude, I, you know, at one point I was tripping out because I saw the dude from Criminal Minds. Yeah, he was there. We saw him. Uh, the, you know, the math dude. <laughs> Christopher, I, what did I say? Matt? I don't Matt. remember. Matt. Uh, yeah, he was there. So it was, yeah, it was. Lots of lights on the floor. Lots of light projecting on lots, things. Lots of movement. Lots, lots of, of you know, all of a sudden Buddha's on the wall and he's just sitting there and you're like, what is going on? And then it's gone and then everything's moving to music. A long time before it repeats itself too. A like long, a long time. time. They're not afraid to like, you might miss it if you don't hang out for like two or three minutes yeah. in a room. They t they say on the website that uh, a lot of people will tell you minimum of two hours two you want to spend in there. And we spent uh, a little over two hours in there. We were in there for were a little, we for, for a little yeah, two hours. Yeah, we were in there for a little over two hours. We got in there at six twenty, and it was just after eight thirty when we left. Insane. So yeah, it, it, it was just so cool. You'll see some of the video. You have to experience it yourself. Yeah, you have to experience it yourself. The snowflakes played music. Oh, that's how we were pushing. Mm -hmm. And no, there's no sign that says it's no. not like stupid. Well, for all intents purposes, it's not like stupid Universal Studio or, or stupid Disneyland where all the oh hit this and punch that. No, 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 no. If you we we had to have missed a bunch of stuff. Oh, we did. There, we know, did, and, and we didn't. And we didn't. Tugging, we also didn't do the for everything th for three dollars more. You can do the the the. It's like a bonus experience where you get to do a scavenger hunt. So there's a lot of these little red things um, that you can scan a card on. Like you get your name and you register everything and then you scan a card and then there's more stuff and it shows you more things on the screen and other different things you can do and you scavenger hunt through the whole thing. I figured if we go back in August, we'll do that part of it. I just kind of wanted to do, you know, without having to have to do all it that It was stuff. great just to like bounce off things. You, we gotta go back around this way because there's ten more rooms they over here. And it's... In, they encourage you to touch everything. They encourage you to like. You just don't know where the next door is. Dan opened up a locker, and inside the locker there was a door handle, and then there was a door. You know what we didn't figure out? We didn't ever figure out where the. Oh, maybe you went up from the bottom. The 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 file cabinet door that he said was a one way door. I don't know. We I don't never know figured where that out. Went to. We never figured out how to get to that. Uh uh. So I'm sure there's things we missed. There's got to be things we missed. I'm certain but that there was doors and things we missed. I just 
Wow. <laughs> wow. If I was an employee there, I just would be in heaven every day. It was really cool. It was worth it. It was such a good experience. There. And there's a whole other side of it was with another experience called like the illumination illumination and things yeah. were just lit up and stuff like that so we might but, have to do that next time and then i found out there's a disney experience here now too yeah yeah so there's like a whole disney experience where you go and they like it's kind oh, of the yes. same type of yes, thing like me that. the lights are moving on the wall and like they showed this lady and as you there's like uh like i don't know what it'd be like pixies or something on the floor and as uh -huh. you walk across the floor everything moves away from you automatically i don't know how they do that but as everyone's walking on the floor nobody's actually stepping on anything the lights are moving away from you as you're and it's everybody and then like there's a whole bunch of stuff in that one and then like you they, you kind of go through a whole bunch of disney movies and the projections are on the wall and things are moving so it's that same like the art installation it's like that same motion and lights but with disney stuff so I mean, we have to come back and we have to go do that. <laughs> if it's anything like what we had happen tonight, I don't know. There's got to be a condition or something of when like the lights hit you and then you like feel it and it's just like vibrates through you. I, I had that so much this weekend with all the tech and all this Omega Mart that the Omega like, Mart I'm cool. almost exhausted from it. Yeah, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted and you know. I feel like we've done no justice to what we saw with anything that's come out of our mouth. Yeah, we haven't. If you want to experience it, come I to just, Vegas. What is it now? What happens in Vegas? What happens in Vegas? Only happens in Vegas. Only happens in Vegas. And, they're, and they're trying hard. Yeah. The, oh, the, the sphere. We hunt out. Oh, yeah, uh, the sphere. Yeah, we, maybe we Look, Dan, it's the sphere. We, yeah, we parked somewhere. It was where we, the park, where we parked at CES. CES. Yeah. Yeah, and we went up to the top and, and checked out that sphere. We said it a hundred times. It is the real deal. Yeah, it it's is really real cool. Deal. Forget about going inside. The outside of it, it's yeah. the real deal. Yeah. It's the real deal. Go see the sphere. Yeah, it's it was pretty cool. We even saw a mini sphere inside of CES. All right. It, and, I, and I had just talked about how I wanted my own sphere. Yeah, so and, and we'll there it was. A I want mini -sphere. a sphere this big that has that shows whatever's running on the sphere right, in Vegas. Right. That tech is cool. Yeah. So we did look at the, at the sphere. Yeah. Well, you know what? Way to go Vegas. Because yeah. look at all, like, I'm so stimulated with this place. Way to go Vegas. Yeah. It's cleaned up. It yeah, feels safe. Yeah, it's, it's not what it was years ago. Have you ever felt unsafe here at all? Nope. Nope, nope. at all. It's not, it's, it's, it's a different experience. There's families here, like lots of families. Lots of families And here. there's actually lots of things for the kids to do. I actually yes. think here at the Luxor, they're putting in an arcade. I think that's what they're doing over there is yeah. like an actual arcade. But like New York, New York has a full-blown arcade for kids in there. Like a Dave & Buster's full-blown mm -hmm. arcade. Like there's all of these. Excalibur? And, uh, Excalibur, yeah. Has the dungeon? Yeah. So there's like Full a arcade. bunch of different things that they're doing now for like, if you want to bring your family here, like, oh, you don't want to go to Disneyland, you want to go to Vegas. The adults can, you know, go gamble, but they're they're making sure there's more things for families to the Disney experience. That's right. something a family could go to. Oh, Megamart. How many kids did we see in there? Oh, yeah. 100% oh, yeah. kid yes. friendly. Like 100% yes. your kids could and, go in there. And, it's, and, and they talk about it's a TikTok experience. It's an Instagram experience. Yeah. You know, so it's like that. Also, it's a, it's a different world. It's a softer it's a softer world. You know, Blake and Blake's generation, my son Blake, he's 22. Blake's generation isn't a what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas thing. Right. It's an old 90s mindset that's tapered off. It's now a softer world with experiences and stuff like that. So I think Vegas is adjusting to it. Yeah. Vegas is yeah. starting to adjust to it. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think so too. Yes. There was a couple of like adult themes, very rare. Yeah. When we used to come back in the 90s, there was people standing out everywhere. You guys know this, handing out flyers, handing out flyers for adult entertainment, adult themes, spicy content everywhere. Right. They're all over the ground, the flyers and stuff. Not one. Yeah. It's gone. You got to go to Fremont Street for that. We haven't done that experience we yet. Ha We've said we that. haven't. That's right up the street from my mom's house. They're kind of like, uh, but I want to zip line. Don't, yeah. Yeah. I want to zip line down Fremont Street. But you know what? It's Maybe great because we might be back for Super Zoo. We got to yeah. have more things yeah more things to do yeah well, that's what we were kind of discussing today is like there's it's we were talking about how you know disneyland is great but i feel like every time we come back here there's something different we could do like we didn't you know not that i want to do museums and stuff but like even the titanic exhibit that's here in this hotel in this hotel downstairs. i think would be cool oh yeah but yeah. like i think that'd be cool too we need time to do it <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the rocks today more than I expected to. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. I mean, I knew I would like break. it. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I would like it, but. Yeah, that was, that was, that was cool. We debated going down and walking through a part of the Canyon Canyon, but when we saw that the people were this big, then you, you gauge how far away that is. And then you turn around and you look and you go, oh yeah, that's a hill. 
We just we watched so we watched so much from <laughs> the convention did. and stuff like that. Yeah, and I thought we got a good ex- experience uh, without riding a burrow down to the bottom. Right, uh, right. We, we, yeah. we could have went and rented um, across al- the street. Also, since it's just a, like, there's not like uh, like specific like cut out steps for us to go down. It was pretty rocky to get down there. You could see where people were walking, but there was a little. It was a little hard to get up yeah. and up and down. There's a couple times where you're kind of like, whoa. Yeah. So that a was, rock slips under your foot, yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, we're uh, this isn't yeah. like walking on it's level ground. Steep. So we well, yeah, we did it. We did it. We did. I do. This didn't do it justice. You got to experience all this for yourself. We did it. Here we are. We're back. We'll keep doing these often. If you don't mind us just rant, rant. if you mind us just rambling about Talking our about days, life. our weeks, just life. So yeah, that makes it easier than us trying to research the news to find whatever Steamboat Willie's free domain. <laughs> free Anybody domain. can use it <laughs> now. Am I allowed to put? Am I allowed to put Steamboat Willie like right here? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's public domain now. You know what? I'm still not brave enough to do it for YouTube. <laughs> I'm still not brave enough to do well, it. Well, you heard YouTube. what happened, right? No. So my friend Brock Baker, he does he's the <laughs> Brock Baker. <laughs> <laughs> That's made up, right? That's his YouTube name. Oh, yeah. perfect. Um, so he does like voice impressions and things like that, mm-hmm. but he has a channel called Brock's Dubs where he dubs over different things. He uploaded the Steamboat Willie video and he dubbed over the entire thing and made it look like they were saying the things he wanted them to say, even though it was public domain. Disney hit hit him with a copyright strike, and he's fighting it right now. So. so Disney's just being a, a butthead, it's a Disney. big brother over yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't want to do that. Do you think everybody was waiting in anticipation anticipation with Disney content? Yeah, like here it comes. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they're making that like Mickey Mouse horror movie. When Winnie the Pooh went uh, public domain, they made a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. It's dumb because when I heard there was a Winnie the Pooh horror movie, I was excited that Disney put money behind a <laughs> Winnie the Pooh horror story, and then it was like done poorly. And yeah. It, and it, mm-hmm. I don't like it. If and and I think you've said or Jamie, I don't know who said it. if you if your business is active and alive. Yeah. You should, Jamie said that. You should be able to hold on to your property. Yeah. You should not be able to take the Twinkie hostess guy. Right. And do whatever you want with the Twinkie guy. Yeah. I don't care how weird you guys are. Nobody should be able to squeeze the Twinkie filling out of the Twinkie guy, but hostess. Right. Right. So unless their company doesn't exist anymore, and then the then, seventy-five years has then, passed, then it yes, makes sense. Then it makes sense. Yeah, but and I think you know some of those laws are antique laws and need to be changed. But uh-huh. but for now. You can watch a horror movie of uh, Steamboat Willie, apparently. And there's a hot take on a, a, a world of it. There you go. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. I think, is that, okay, so after this, there's so much podcast equipment and stuff here. We have to I pack. think I'm going to pack it up and send it all back over there. It's, what, like 11 o'clock at night, so I'd oh get you gosh. to the airport tomorrow before you turn into a Midwesterner again. If, so <laughs> now if we're I make back it home. full circle to the story. Uh, where are we at right this second we're here for you trying to get home to your first hockey game? Supposed to get 10 to 15 inches of snow at home. They're having 50 mile an hour winds. Uh, so far, we still have power at our house and Greg still has power at his house. Although Greg said, I have no idea how I still have power and internet at my house. Right. Um, so it is, uh, we're supposed to get up in the morning tomorrow and Jamie's going to try to drive through the snowstorm, which is supposed to end in Detroit at 7 a.m., but not supposed to end at our house till 7 p.m. And 10 to 15 inches of snow means hopefully he doesn't spin you out. You anyway. guys better win. And he better not spit out. He better not spit out. He doesn't. He's Jamie. No. Also, and he did. He wouldn't tell you. Um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't you guys, tell me. You guys better win. Also, what's Jamie been doing all day long? Uh, Jamie actually went and got because we finally got snow. Real so snow. We, we pretty much figured out that the you know we haven't got a lot of snow. You guys have been watching the vlogs. We got a little bit, and then it melted, and then a little bit, and then it melted. And I'm like, this is stupid. It's January, and it's 35 degrees. This is dumb. Then I left, and we got dumped on. We got eight inches of snow. So of course I left. Snow happened. Jamie finally went and got his snow machine, brought that home. Didn't have his, uh, didn't have his sticker on the side, his trail permit sticker on is the that side of his like machine. A registration for us city so people. So no, the 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 snow machine is registered. So just like a car, the snow machine is registered. It has a license plate. It's not a it's not a license plate. It has a number on the side, a similar to a li- yes, like a boat sticker. Yes, um, and it's on the side of the machine, and that's his license plate, quote unquote. Um, so he had that. The machine's mm. registered. The machine's insured. But to be able to run the trails, you have to have a trail sticker. Well, of course he doesn't have a trail sticker because the season just opened, and you have to renew them every year. Like they're only good for so long. Okay. So. His plan was he was just going to bring the snow machine home and then go get his trail sticker because it was the first day of snow. There's not going to be anybody on the trails. The trails aren't groomed. And he was riding multi-use trails in the side of the road to get home. 
Everybody sell these little stickery things, like a fishing license. Like um, I can just like go anywhere and get. You can one go of these. to like the DNR and get them, or anywhere that has a DNR license. Is that license. next like, to the Secretary of State? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you can get them at Walmart. You can get them at Meyer. There's okay. a couple little party stores that carry them. Okay, but, like in the fishing department. You go yeah, on? yeah, pretty much. You can go there and you can get them, um, and they're like fifty-two dollars for a trail permit for the year. Ah, okay. So it's really not bad, and wow. the money goes to grooming the trails and maintaining the trails. And which you know, I saw that for the first time. You said, "Look groomer. at this machine," and there's this like big, huge machine that. Goes goes by and like zambonis the trail yep so you can you can uh ride on the trails I, it's so it's smoother that's so kind yeah it's that's so, so it's, kind of you guys yeah, right to, like, groom the trail. like that's that's that is a very nice gesture right gesture yeah gesture. Uh, yeah it was very nice of you guys to so, groom the trail so so he was uh on the trail on the first day of snow and of course who else was on the trail on the first day of snow besides the groomer wasn't even on the trail but the dnr so jamie got pulled over on a snow machine and the guy was really really nice is he on the snow machine too? I, yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure the DNR guy okay. was on a snow machine. Wait, I'll have to ask him. Does the snow Jamie. machine have like lights? Like, did he, woo, woo, woo. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> it should Please say do. DNR on the side of it. I know they have ATVs that they drive and they... So I heard more of the story today that you didn't hear be, either. He can't just yell at Jamie. It's loud. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he got pulled over on the snow machine. The guy really? was really, really nice. And so this is the part of the story you didn't hear yet. The guy asked him, have you ever been pulled over before? And Jamie was like, or do you, have, do you have any tickets or blah, 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 blah. And Jamie's like, no, 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 no. And uh, the guy came back and he goes, you got a ticket in 2006? And Jamie's like, oh, yeah, it must have been for speeding in the cube truck when he used to work for Young's. And he's telling this guy this whole story about, you know, speeding in the cube truck and he wasn't really speeding and he was coming downhill and the truck's heavy and, like, he was only doing a few miles an hour over the speed limit, but it was on a downhill and, and the guy still gave him a ticket and blah, 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 blah. He tells the guy the whole story. The guy still gives him a ticket. Was really nice. Jamie said he was really nice. He even asked him if he could film and film his his rig, and he said he could, but then he didn't because Jamie was just talking oh, to the guy. Oh, the little vlogger. So, yeah, I love yeah. It. So, uh, so he was talking to the guy. Blah 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 blah. This morning, I'm talking to him on the phone, and he's telling me this part of the story, and I'm thinking, I know exactly what what he's gonna say next because I instantaneously remembered what happened in 2006. He's like, yeah, I was talking to this guy, and he didn't really say anything about what my ticket was from 2006. He goes. Do you remember what we got a ticket for in 2006? And I went, yeah, for driving on a trail we weren't supposed to be on in my Jeep. We were driving on the power line trails, and we weren't supposed to be on them, which That's we didn't know. That's for the know. people that work on the power lines well, to get to the power lines. Well, yes and no. If you have certain trail permits, certain power lines you can drive on, but we were in a conventional vehicle, not an ATV, so technically mm, we weren't mm -hmm. supposed to be there. They caught us through the sky. They caught us by an airplane. So they were. They, it was Labor Day weekend, and they were flying airplanes over. And we could hear the airplane. And we're like, what is this airplane doing? Flying over, flying over, flying over, flying over. And we left and we went to go back to the trailer in Atlanta. And uh, we got pulled over just down the road by the DNR. And they wrote us a ticket for being on the... They were... That's a lot of money and resources to get you on one. It was Labor Day weekend, so it wasn't only us that they caught. So this dude brings up a ticket from 18 years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and Jamie forgot what it was. And then he was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, so he was telling me that story today. So the last time he got a ticket from the DNR was apparently, and I for some reason thought I got that ticket, but apparently he got it. But either way, we got pulled over and uh, got that ticket for that. So this is his second ticket through the DNR, which doesn't go on your record like a speeding ticket because it's not it's not the police. You just like log into the dot com. And well, pay no, it. it's not like gonna make my car insurance or anything go up. It's right. not that it's not type of ticket. It's not points on your record. Yeah. So it's like a violation. Yeah. Uh, so there's, so JV goes for a rip. Yep. For the last couple of days, he's headed out, right? He's pretty much gone out every single day. He usually messages me before he leaves so that I can kind of peek in on the dogs and stuff. Because, you know, my brother lives right up the road. So if, if something were to happen or if they were to need to go out mm -hmm. or something, he, he could go down and let him out. But uh, Jamie has pretty much been on the sled every single day. Every single day. That and, I've been gone. And I'm sure, you know, all of you guys watch the videos. Uh, Jamie got a new snow, uh, a new, uh, a new snow machine. Snow machine. You didn't get to ride it too much last year. Yeah, I think he only ride uh, it like, rode it like two or three times last year. Winter. Well, because the first time they went, he had the yellow rig. And then we right. bought the black one later in the season. Mm -hmm. um, well, one, because we knew we would get it cheaper because winter was coming to an end. Two, we had, a, <laughs> we, had a, we had a horrible, a horrible so winter. Rad. So everybody, it was, everybody was selling their rigs. And uh, so, yeah, he got that black one. And I think he only took it out, like, a couple times. I think you guys only saw it in the vlog a handful of times, maybe once or twice. 
So, but I've he, climbed on it. It's beautiful. <coughs> it is a beautiful machine. Yeah. And it, and it feels like it only wants to go fast from sitting it, on it. It only wants to go fast. <laughs> that is all that thing is designed to do. But Jamie said he drove it like a grandpa down the trails uh, because he was enjoying the scenery. And he sent me two pictures from his one of the videos that he took. He sent me two pictures. And that's what I showed you where the like everything's just hanging over the trail so he was definitely out there having fun in the snow and as much as i'm having a ton of fun here i'm kind of envious that i don't have my dogs out on the trail and i'm kind of sad that like there's real my sled is sitting there and i'm like i could have ran the dog it always happens when you leave i know so that's what we figured out i have to leave for it to snow because or come back because now 10 to 15 inches is on their way and i have to try to get home yeah it'll melt you're like elsa's sister (laughs) melza it's gone when you i thought the cutest thing today though everybody just checks in on the camera to see how much it's snowing out there. And Jamie's on his uh, snow dude. What's it called? A snow, snow machine. A, on his snow machine out there, just kind of bouncing on it. And he's just kind of, he zips <laughs> it around to the front. And he's all into it and stuff like that. Nobody know He's just out there. You can't tell we're watching. No. Nope. He's just out there enjoying his little machine thing. So and J- I think Jamie's having a great time. Oh, yeah. He's having a great time. And I'm certain... Uh, because they were getting like 16 to 20 inches up in the UP uh, and his cousin Chris is uh, in between jobs right now and mm-hmm. he, taking a break from like the construction stuff that he was doing. Let's get on that. I am certain Snow I'm going to get home and they're going to be like, hey, we booked a place and we're going to go. See you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be cool. And I, I hope they do because they you really have they have so much fun together up there. Like it's they have so much fun. I get so many pictures and videos from Jamie when he's up there doing that. And I'm just really glad that, you know, he enjoys it as much as he does because it's not a thing like we have two sleds. I could get gear and I could ride the other sled. I like to go fast. I like all those snow machines still scare me. I can't tell what's under the snow. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I like my dog sled. I like running the dog sled. I like doing that and, and that, and that's fun. And, uh, but Jamie does still have that black and yellow sled. I, mean, I don't know how much you guys know about, you know, Jamie and when he gets something newer, he doesn't like to let go of the thing he had before, which is mm-hmm. why we had the red Jeep mm-hmm. for so many years. And, uh, I think he wants to keep the yellow one, but you know, his dad could ride it. His dad can ride it Robert on the farm. Ride it, yeah, yeah Robert can ride it. Some Or we'll have it if somebody wants to go. Like the one time he was talking about going, uh, he was telling Dan Westergaard, he was like, all you got to do is get gear. I got a sled. Yeah. So like That's having... That's kind of cool. So he doesn't have to go by himself, exactly. which is better because I... I'm speaking for you. I don't like that Jamie's out there by himself on the trail. I know. I don't either. So that would be that would be good. And and real quick, why didn't we see any electric uh, snowmobiles at CES? Because um, that's an 850 horsepower machine. Woo. I don't know that they're Woo. ready for that yet. I mean, like, I don't know. And the batteries don't last as long in cold. Oh, so I think what? until they come up with a way to make it so the batteries are better insulated and they last longer in the cold, I think that's. Do you think that why. happens like in the Teslas and the Rivian cars? Yeah, they do. It like, does. Depending yep. on where you. Okay. Yeah, the batteries don't last as long in Teslas where we live in the wintertime when it gets really cold when it's like fourteen degrees. The cars don't operate the same way. Uh, you know, I understand cold batteries. I get shrinkage too in the cold. <laughs> I totally get it. One last thing before we get out of here: How is Kira doing with coming inside with uh, with Jamie being home? <laughs> so, right before we left, I bought a bunch of apples and cut them into pieces so Kira could have her frozen apples again because it's her favorite thing in the winter mm. time. How do you freeze them? Uh, I just cut them and throw them in a in a little Tupperware thing and put them in the freezer. Oh, you want to throw them outside in the snow? No, I mean I could though. It's going to be so cold when I get home. I probably could just set them outside and they'd be frozen. Um, and they're not freeze dried. <laughs> but uh, I put a whole bunch of them in a little Tupperware container, and I made the mistake before I left of getting her back into the mindset of if I stay outside, everybody else goes inside, and mom brings me an apple because I'm amazing. So Kira, everybody will go outside. Kira won't come back inside. I go get her an apple. I give her an apple. She plays with the apple. She eats the apple. Then she comes inside 50% of the time. 50% of the time, That's she stands generous. there and looks at you and says, fluff off, I want another apple. So I shouldn't have started giving her the apples before I left because I put her back in that mindset. Mm-hmm. So Jamie has been having a very difficult time getting Kira back into the house every single time. So uh, the other day he decided that's it. He's not messing with her anymore. And he put her on a leash. <laughs> he walked her around the yard. <laughs> he said Eleanor took off running to the back of the yard. And Kira looked up at him like... <laughs> what the heck? Why does she get to go and I'm stuck here? And I told him, I said, you know, you do that with her a couple of times. She's going to realize you need, you mean business and she's going to come back inside. Does the half leash work still? He put the half leash on her and he said it worked a couple of times. And then the one time she didn't care. She was just like, nope. But she has to know 
the half leash tricks her to thinking she's connected to us. So then we have to remind her that we can still put a leash on her and she's connected to something and we can, can bring her back in the house. So I think that's kind of what he was doing with having her on the leash. And then he'll try the half leash again. So. We need magnets. We need a, <laughs> a, a collar with magnets. So when I get close to right? Kira, I can just swing it out she clack, did and then I'm and I'm good it'll stick to the collar yeah because magnets are so powerful and right. small these days yeah whack and then you're good because what's the deal can, can Jamie Jamie or you you just can't you just can't get her because her reaction times are way faster than ours uh -huh. so you just can't even grab there's the a dog. video that he took that I think doesn't have any audio on it but uh, we can voice it over or share it here or it'll be in a vlog or something where he's showing what happens when you try you can't grab that dog it's just too fast in the no and it's time. a game it's a it becomes a game yeah, it's a you know yeah. yeah and so it just makes it more difficult because now you've made a game for the dog so how has Eleanor not picked up on this Oh my God, if Eleanor picks up on this, we're, we're never getting any of the dogs inside ever. It sucks because Eleanor was the reason that Kira started coming inside. Like Eleanor, she didn't want Eleanor to get something and her not to get something. So once she realized, you know, oh, well, this is happening, so I'm going to follow Eleanor. Or Eleanor's out there beating her up because, you know, we told Eleanor, we, we pretty, not that the dogs understand, but we kept telling Kira, keep, quit picking on your sister mm -hmm. because eventually she's going to be bigger than you and she's going to pick on you. And that's exactly what happened. So Kira will get annoyed because Eleanor is like wanting to wrestle and Kira's like, I don't want to wrestle. So she'll come in the house because she doesn't want to be out there. But now it's winter. So all right. bets are off. All bets are off. It's, yeah. it's, it's winter. summertime. Yeah, she's like, it's winter. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I want to sleep in the snow. I want to lay out here. I want to live out here, which, I, you know, I, she would. She would live out there. Like I could probably leave her outside all day long and she would curl up in the snow and she would sleep out there and she wouldn't come in until it was time to eat. She would stay out there all day. She just loves it. Oh, Dane Snow Dogs. When yeah. I first met you, I was like, I didn't understand a husky's different than your house dog. And I'm like, how and why? And then you <laughs> touch the dog and it's not wet and it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. the oils. And yep. It's, it's, their, it's their summertime now. They're, they're, built for, they're built for this. All right. So, Jess, so here we go. So, we're trying to figure out if you're even leaving tomorrow. I have no I, idea. Worst case scenario, you're here for another day. We'll go to my mom's house. My yeah. mom lives right up the street here with some of my other family members. They're a delight. So, we could do that. Otherwise, you're sitting in Detroit until someone comes and saves you. Or, Ryan's got your back. You're going to go to a hockey game. The Red Wings are going to win. It's going to have worked out perfect. You're going to look at your phone every five minutes for nothing to see what's going on. I, know. <laughs> I choose that one. I think that's what's going to happen. I nothing think I'm gonna make just it. Work out like if nothing could ever just be. Ooh, I think I think the something. universe is gonna let me go home tomorrow, and and, and it's Wait. gonna let me make it to the my first professional hockey game. I think it's gonna happen. I think I'll get there. I think I think it'll be fine. It will. I think the storm will have moved far enough because I don't land till five o'clock. So I think the storm will have moved far enough that I'll make it, and then it's twenty minutes from Metro to Little Caesars Arena. Little Caesars Arena. How awesome. I'm so happy for you guys. It's going to we'll be, be so cool. I'll watch it on TV somehow. I don't know if I'm going back home or I'm going to go spend a day at my mom's right. tomorrow. I'd like to go see my mom for a while. You yeah. Know? You know? I know. I was bummed that I missed your mom this time. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to give your mom, Give your mom a hug for me. I will, definitely. <laughs> we were all here for Super Zoo in uh, August, August, September. Yeah. And we went, we did go and hang out with my mom yeah. uh, for a while. Because my, so. my flight got delayed. Because flight got delayed. Again. Because <laughs> ah, you know, so. there was a hurricane. There was a hurricane. That's right. It was. It's Vegas. It was. It's Vegas. It's Vegas. It is. It's Vegas. It was a hurricane the a last hurricane. time. I was. I had to jam home for the yeah. hurra quake. Yeah. Because our hurricane and earthquake happened. That's right. And now Pearl. we have Snowmageddon. And Snowmageddon. And it's we don't. Vegas. And we don't know Mageddon. And we don't know Mageddon. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. Let's wrap this up. So our future plans for this is to do this as often as we can. There's a lot of traveling. More traveling than ever for us this season. Yeah. We have Pencil no. No. We have New Jersey. New Jersey. Virginia. Canada, Canada, at least Novi, and something in between there, I think. Super Zoo in August. I went out for par pumpkin carving in October. I would like to do that. So, yep. Yeah, August. So, I would like you to come out for camping maybe this year. And there's going to be more of this to some degree because I enjoy hanging out and, talk, yeah. and talking oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Also, technology has come a long way. It's made it easier than ever for us to hang out and, and chat yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So. It's easier to do this in person than it is to do it through the computer, too. Mm. I feel like it just feels better when we're together than it does when we're thousands of miles apart. It just feels... I don't know, different. A little it's bit. It's different. A little bit. Not that we won't still do it, but it's just, it's just different. Yep. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Hey, now. I'll have a proper, uh, a proper outro next time, but we're going to pack up. We're going to take stuff to the car. We're going to get onto a hockey game. We're going to do it. And we're going to win. And we're going to win. We're going to win. You're going to win. And we're going to end this episode here on the CC Mouse Podcast. So as of right now, 118 episodes are on Spotify. Spotify. If we keep this up, I told myself, if we keep this up for a few months, I will bring back the Podbean, which will aggregate some of these episodes to 
the Google, whatever uh, Google's podcast no, is. No, they're Google's getting rid of their podcast app. Okay. It'll be on YouTube. Pod- you uh, can listen to it through YouTube Music Podcasts now. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so it'll so. pull through there. You'll be able to listen to it on Apple. But yeah. Spotify is, is where everybody most most of it out. The, the rest of the episodes is on YouTube.com slash CC Mouse Podcast. Yes. Which you're probably watching this all now. Right. And that's pretty much where, we're, that's the main channel that we're, we're putting up all our stuff yeah. on. So, yeah. yeah, you know, subscribe, tell a friend. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back, baby. Yes, and we'll see you next time. Same mouse time. Same house podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. And guess what? What? We did a thing. Oh, my gosh. I forgot you used to say that. <laughs> we did a thing. We did a thing. I hope I don't freeze tonight. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, wait. We got to. Cheers. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.